Hello, my name is Erica Nicole Worthily. I'm a licensed clinical social worker here in Jacksonville, Florida. Enjoying this heat, heat, heat. Not really. <laughs> but today I'm going to talk to you about teaching with mental health in mind. This is something that I began a little over a year ago after spending several years working as a teacher and then working as a school-based clinical counselor for an elementary school. In that time, the needs of the children were always apparent to me. However, I recognized that the educators needed just as much support. And I'm not talking about support with doing their job, but I'm talking about that mental and emotional support, the well-being, um, the ability to cope with and deal with whatever stresses maybe have been uh, impacting them whatever on that day or that particular hour class period, whether it was um, something in school or something outside of school that's infecting, affecting them and therefore impacting the classroom. So I decided to focus on teaching with mental health in mind. It's twofold. It's one to assist educators in a, um, it's one to assist educators in being able to understand what is happening with students, but two, more importantly, um, or just as important, is focusing on yourself and being able to look in the mirror and say, here's who I, this is who I am, this is what's going on with me, and be honest with yourself about how things are impacting your life. Again, whether it's something that's going on inside the classroom or inside the career environment or outside influences. So we're gonna go through some things today to hopefully get you to think about ways that you can change your mindset with, with regard to mental health, understanding your students better, but again, just as important, understanding yourself and your own needs as well. So I'm gonna jump right in. Today we're gonna be talking about identifying sources of stress, determining what you can do for yourself, like what is in your power to make the changes that you need to make in your life to reduce the stress in your life, and then identifying the appropriate, appropriate people who can provide you with the support that you need in order to do the work that you do. One of the things we're gonna look at is actually defining simple definition of stress. It's something that's natural, it's with all, in all of us. We're going to be stressed at some point. Sometimes the stress is, almost seems like a motivation, like a drive, okay, I gotta do this, I gotta do this. And you know, like if you're really competitive, I was kind of competitive and played sports. And so there was that stress of want, just wanting to win. Um, the stress of doing something that's exciting. Um, those are different kinds of, stress. There's different levels to it, but that's not the kind of stress I'm going to focus on right now. I'm focused more so on the protective nature of stress. When we feel threatened or we're facing some major or even not so major challenges, we often hear about addressing what's going on with a child in the classroom and engaging the whole brain, but we need to be able to shift the focus on ourselves as educators and determine what it is that we specifically need in order to be the best that we can be in the environment that we serve. So what's stressing you out? Okay, we gotta start with start there. So I'm gonna do a, just a, a tiny little bit of math. Um, math is not my favorite subject, but I do pretty good with it. This is sorta kind of math. Uh, we're gonna talk about positives and negatives. A lot of times positives and negatives is um, used in terms of good and bad, which is why I threw the math part in there. We're talking about positive as in adding to and negative as in taking from or less than. So when it comes to stress, positive stress, I want you to think of something that's, that's too much. And then negative stress is not enough. And then we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about what toxic stress is. A lot of times with positive stress, we think about um, things that maybe become overwhelming. That may be a good word, okay? Overwhelming to you. It's too much of something. 
a lot of times people might feel like they're buried or they can't stretch far enough in order to encompass everything that needs to be done. So too many, so too many what ifs, too many fears, too many unknowns, especially right now with everything that's happening with the pandemic, with politics and everything else is there's so many what ifs and unanswered whys. We don't know necessarily all of the answers and that in and of itself can add stress to our lives. Then there's the voices. And what I mean by voices are just people. Who are we surrounding ourselves with? And then not only just the people, but those things that we tell ourselves, um, the conversations that we have within our own heads. We spend probably more time talking to ourselves than you actually realize. Um, but through those thought, those thought processes, we're talking to ourselves. Um, maybe too many bills. Some people were in a position where they lost work or lost income and things like of that nature. And it becomes overwhelming if you have more bills, of course, than you have money or income. And then pain. Some people are having physical challenges may or may not be go, able to go to the doctor and may have some anxiety about going to the doctor, especially during this particular time. Um, there's task and responsibility. There's educators who are already responsible for anywhere from 20 to 120 students that do not belong to them, but teaching while raising your own children, that's a lot of responsibility. Um, especially when you have to make sure that they're getting everything that they need, not just academically, but just survival. Uh, you got to make sure they eat. You got to make sure the house stays in some kind of decent order. You have to, um, you know, attend to your spouse if you're married or maintain your relationship if you're dating and, um, make time for friends when you can. And, and it sometimes again, that just becomes overwhelming. Our feelings, sometimes we don't know what to feel. We don't know what to do with the feelings. All right, so those are just some different things. One of the things I know that several people have is just options. It's like, okay, we have 20 different options. Well, until you narrow it down to three or four, sometimes it can be really hard to think about what to do next. So those are some positive stresses, things that are just too much or too many. The negative stress, we're talking about not enough. So I already mentioned money. That comes up a lot. It comes up often. It really impacts relationships. It really impacts um, mental health, well-being, time, not enough time. 24 hours seems like it should be enough, but it often there's times where it seems like you're running out. Resources such as food, um, there are people that are challenged with not being able to afford what they need. And I put food there specifically, but there really could be a lot of specific, just basic essentials that you need around the house. Again, not enough options. It's the opposite of, you know, too many options, not enough options. It's like, okay, well, you're giving me one answer, but I know that that's not the right answer. I need something else to go on. Strategies. You know, as teachers, we're used to having the strategies in order to deal with certain things. Well, with all of the changes that we've experienced over the last several months, some strategies really haven't been invented, tried, determined to, to be effective. Um, you may not feel like you have enough strength, may not feel like you have enough flexibility in order to do what is required of you. And again, that adds to your stress. Now, I'm gonna talk a little bit about toxic stress because these things are that have already been listed are things that everybody has experienced at some point or another, sometimes for very brief periods of time, sometimes for very long periods of time. Sometimes it may have been experienced during childhood. You may be experiencing it now. A lot of it has a major impact on your mental health it has an impact on your self-worth. It has an impact on your confidence. Like not just not feeling like you're good enough falls in that category of not enough creating some stress in your life. The difference with 
negative stress and positive stress and toxic stress is, does it significantly impair your general well-being? Does it significantly impair your relationships? Does it prevent you from doing your work effectively? That the significantly impairs is the major part of that. So say for example, if you have too much pain and it could be physical pain, it could be emotional pain, um, what whatever that pain may be. I had several teachers that I worked with over the years come to my classroom or come to my office and really just wanna talk. And a lot of times they were experiencing pain. A lot of it was emotional pain where they may have had troubles in their relationships at home and without finding a release for that pain, they were not able to effectively work with their students the way that they knew that they could and that they should because they were, they needed a way to relieve the pain. And sometimes the best way to relieve that type of pain is being able to talk to someone about it. And I encouraged that, you know, I, I allowed teachers to come to me and I served them in that capacity being just an ear for them to let some of those things out for to, to get some release. Now, in terms of physical pain, you know, do you need to go to the doctor? Do you need to schedule appointments? Are those appointments impacting your work? Are you being reprimanded for taking too many days off because you need to take care of your physical needs? That's an ex extensive um, impairment and can significantly cause additional stress in your life because if you're not able to be at work and you're penalized for taking off to take care of your physical pain, then that impacts several other other areas in your life. And it's like a domino effect. And nobody wants that. You want to be able to take care of yourself physically and still be able to do the job that you absolutely love. And I know you love the kids. <laughs> so we're going to talk about ways to relieve some stress with spices. So spices, you know, you talk about cinnamon and sage and all kinds of things, but spices have been used all over the world to flavor our food. Obviously, I happen to like my spices, but here's some spices that can provide some mental health benefits. Now, in case you hadn't figured it out already, I'm not talking about food. As educators, you know, we love our acronym. So SPICES is actually an acronym. So I want you to follow along with me just for a little while. The S in SPICES stands for social. Now we all have basic needs that should be met on a consistent basis, if not daily, consistently. So we're going to start with S. Social needs our social needs include making sure that we're spending time engaging with other people. So whether that's talking on the phone or cuddling with your kids at night or going out with your friends or FaceTiming in a group. Now some you know, people have had Zoom happy hours, you know, things like that to stay engaged with friends and family on a social level. We are social creatures. That's just how we were built. Um, we need that um, companionship. We need to be able to talk to people and interact with people. So when we don't have that, it adds to our stress because we are not able to have that release of energy associated with being social. So, you know, being able to laugh, being able to joke, being able to play, um, being an ear for somebody that's having a difficult time or being able to talk to somebody when you're having a difficult time. That all falls under meeting your social needs. The P is physical. I talked a little bit about the physical when I talked about the pain, but physical includes the whole body, not just specific parts of it. So when I say whole body, I'm including the brain. So not only do we need to make sure that we're doing some type of exercise and making sure we're eating the right kind of foods that work for our body, making sure you're staying hydrated, but the mental health falls, it goes in all of them, but it really does fall into the 
physical part, what a lot of people don't necessarily realize or make the connection to is that a lot of times when people are having mental health issues or suffering from mental illness, it's a brain issue um, where there are connections in your brain that aren't quite working the way that they should be working, um, which is causing, which causes you to have thoughts that maybe you shouldn't have. Um, that causes anxiety. Sometimes it causes depression and, and things like that. So we got to make sure that you're taking care of your brain. Just like you go to the doctor to have a physical, just to make sure that you're, you know, you get a, you get a good checkup every now and then, especially if you're able to recognize the different thoughts and pains and things like that, you should probably see someone, um, a counselor, a therapist, um, you know, a spiritual counselor. If you're, you know, are a member of a church or, or some other organization just to evaluate yourself. And then there's several things you can do, um, several resources available online and things like that. But like things like anxiety, um, it really is, your brain kind of creates these cycles of things. It, it's, it's anticipating something terrible happening that may or not, may or may not ever happen. But what anxiety can do is it can, you can suffer from migraines, you can suffer from digestive problems, you know, a panic attack can feel like a heart attack. So again, focus on if you're feeling different things in your body, some of it may be associated with your brain. So that's something to consider. The I is for intellectual. We need to get our intellectual needs met. We are meant to learn. Even if it's something simple, I get excited when I learn a new word, just that I've never heard it before. And, you know, it's like, oh, oh, well, I didn't know that that meant that, you know, it's interesting. Um, I'm a bit of a nerd. I like watching documentaries and reading biographies and understanding history and things like that. So it's not too difficult for me. Um, but for some people, I like to suggest things like, okay, well, if you, um, Think about some of the things that you genuinely enjoy reading an article or a blog or following things on social media, you know, different social media pages related to whatever it is you love that still counts as learning. It doesn't necessarily have to be academic learning, but just learning something new to keep yourself growing and developing. The C is for creative. Get creative. If you don't already have a hobby, find a hobby, try some things out, try to build, use your imagination, whether that's telling stories, writing stories, singing, dancing, it could be, you know, building a garden, it could be getting creative in the kitchen, interior design, decorating your place, decorating your space, making it nice and comfortable, and all of that falls under creative. The way you nurture your children in your classroom or at home, you can get creative with that. Um, the way you plan your date night, whether you're, you know, dating um, someone or with your spouse, get creative. Romance is a form of creativity. Um, the E is emotional needs. This is something I think a lot of times people overlook. And the reason why I say that is because some people that show their emotions on a regular basis, people look at them and say they're too emotional. But then you have people that are what's kind of lack of better terms, emotionally constipated, where they don't know how to acknowledge and or identify the emotions that they're feeling. And so me, part of meeting that emotional need is either you need to have that, you know, sit down, get, get some time by yourself and evaluate yourself and like, what am I actually feeling? Where is this coming from? Um, and, and, and do I like it? Do I want it to be there? Um, what can I do differently? If it doesn't feel good, what do I do to reduce the impact in my life? It, if it does feel good, what do I do to incre increase the, that aspect of my life? What can I do to get my emotional needs met? Do I need to, um, spend more time alone? Do I need to spend more time around other people? Do I need to do ref some reflection? Do I need to talk to someone and, and get some assistance in processing things that I'm feeling? Um, because you don't want to be in a place where 
feelings are misinterpreted. You want to be able to tell people what's going on with you, what's happening. Trusted people. You don't have to tell everybody your business. Trusted people. You want to be able to say, um, you know, be able to smile and say, I'm actually happy. Um, there was a time where I was smiling one day and somebody asked, how are you doing? I said, actually, I'm not doing that great. You know, even though I was smiling, I was still honest about what I was feeling. And that's okay, too. The last S is for spirituality. This isn't necessarily talking about a religion or being a part of a church or thing like that. It's just understanding that you are a part of something greater than yourself. So it's part of a family, part of a community, part of this nation, part of the world, part of nature. One of my favorite things to do in order to meet that spiritual need is going to the beach at sunrise and having my feet in the sand and feeling the sun, the heat, the warmth from the sun on my face um, it, first thing in the morning. And it's like a recharge, you know, and it lets me know whenever I do that, I am part of something that's so much bigger than who I am, but I know I'm a part. And I think a lot of people kind of miss out on um, recognizing that you are a part of something greater. A lot of people, unfortunately, think the world revolves around them, um, but not necessarily working collaboratively with other, like we're in this together. And I think that makes a big difference. Now there's one letter that just doesn't fit in the acronym SPICES, and that's the letter F. So the F stands for financial. We all have financial needs. Um, and it, you know, of course, things depend on the lifestyle that you lead and, and what type of things that you want, what type of experiences you want to have that has a lot to do with it. But you want to be sure that your financial needs are met. So is the job or is the work that you're doing bringing in enough income to take care of whatever those needs are? The best way to figure that out is literally write out everything that you're spending money on and then working through to make sure, working through creating a budget to make sure that your financial needs are met. Once the needs are met, then you can really, um, experience enjoying life. So that means that you can, you know, set things aside. A lot of these overlap. So if your financial needs are not being met or just being met, then you might need to tap over into that creativity. So Maybe you don't have the resources to buy $200 worth of groceries, but you have enough to buy about $50 worth of groceries. Well, what can you do with that $50 <laughs> to make it last until the next payday? You know, what can you, what can you whip up in the kitchen that you know was going to last? Um, you know, I, I was a single mom with three teenagers uh, while I was teaching. And I remember there were times where we had to say, I had to say, okay, this is how much I have. I need to feed my kids until the next payday. How am I going to do this? They never knew any different. They they always ate, so we were able to work things out. Um, but there's there are times where people are under some financial strain, and I think that that's something that um, is taken into consider needs to be taken into consideration because it does have a lot of times an impact on relationships. It does have a lot of times impact on your mental health as well. So those are the spices, social needs, physical needs, intellectual needs, creative needs, emotional needs, social needs, and making sure that your financial needs are met. So now that we do, now what do we do? We know, you know, different types of sources of stress. We know what our needs are. So some of the ways that you can, um, that are some of the things that are in your control that you can do to relieve some of that stress is using your strengths. So you're making sure that you're meeting your needs with your spices and then you're using your strengths. 
for whatever reason, and I don't know where it began, for whatever reason, our culture and most cultures focus on weaknesses and tell you you need to fix your weaknesses, improve your weaknesses, and build up your weaknesses, but less attention is on your strengths. And I believe the opposite. I believe that we really need to focus on our strengths and identify our weaknesses and then find ways to make up for them. A lot of times the making up for them part, again, goes back to creativity, but it also goes back to the social need and making sure that you have people in your life that may have strengths that you do not possess and find ways to work together. So what would happen if we made our strengths a priority? What would happen? I think things would turn out a lot better. I think too many people are trying to do things that they are capable of doing, but not necessarily great at. And I think we need to get to a place where people can collaborate better when they know, okay, you're great at this, you're great at this, you're great at this. Here are the overall needs and people are assigned based on that and not necessarily based on titles or roles. And I think that would be a great way to work better and run a much more smooth organization. And that's something you can even work with or recognize in your students in your classroom. Like, what are you really good at? You know, so like if a child is really good at math, encourage them, encourage them in that specific area. And I'm not saying don't teach reading, but don't put them in a position where they may neglect math because they got to work on reading. Yes, reading is, an, is needed, um, but you want to build their confidence. And you, when you start focusing on the weaknesses, then the opposite happens. Okay, so we do have just one kind of recipe. It's a recipe for strengths. And I got this recipe out of a book called Strength Finder. So it's basically like our talents, our natural way of thinking, feeling, or behaving, and investment. How much time are we spending practicing and developing um, that particular skill? I was an athlete. So as an athlete, we have practice. Depending on what the sport is, depending on what the event is, you spend your time practicing that particular thing over and over and over again for hours who knows how many hours, but you practice that specific thing because that's the event or that's the position that you know that you can excel in. So what this is doing is multiplying whatever natural talent you have times the investment to get your strength. Could, because you know that you can consistently provide near perfect performance in whatever that particular thing is. So that's one of the thing, reasons why it's really important to understand what your strengths are. I think that this book is really helpful. It was definitely helpful to me because it, one, confirmed things that I already knew about myself, but maybe paid a little bit less attention to it than I should have. But it also gave me the confidence to focus on those specific things and not necessarily try to do other things that I know other people are better suited to do. So I encourage you to try uh, to look for the book. It's called Strengths Finder 2.0. There's an assessment in there and you do the assessment, it gives you a readout and it gives you like your top five strengths. And I think as a, as a group or like within a school, that would be good to identify where everyone's strength lies so that you could work better together and build a healthy school and a healthy community within the school. So the last thing I wanted to talk about is having the right support. So we think of support, we typically think of our family, our friends, our friends at work, our leaders and professionals. Now, everybody's family is not ideal and I recognize that, which is why it's important to have at least one or two close friends outside of your family. But those who do have that healthy family relationship Explain to them what you're doing. Talk about what your strengths are. Talk about what the needs are. What are the needs within the family? Um, what can the family improve on? Get practice collaboration within your house. 
Um, I think a lot of times people neglect that. They focus on what needs to be done and focus on tasks and things like that. And they don't really have those deep conversations of what do we need? What are we, what are we doing really well and what are we missing? We do assessments everywhere else. We need to do the assessments within ourselves and we need to do the assessments within our family. Uh, a lot of that involves understanding personality differences and under understanding um, background experiences as far as like spouses, um, different ways of growing up, different traditions and things like that. I th that has a lot to do with finding the right support within your family. As far as friends, a lot of times, again, the strengths come into play because we tend to attract people that we do have a lot of things in common with, but we wanna have people around us that can make up the difference for us. So if you know that you're a person that may not always be the most punctual, um, but you have a friend that'll be, that, that's on your case and it's like, okay, we're not procrastinating, we're gonna go ahead and go and we're gonna do this and we're gonna be on time. It's a good friend to have. Might get on your nerves a little bit, but it is a good friend to have. Um, and then friends at work, is important as well again for that emotional well-being piece getting those needs met at work because there may be days where things are going awesome you can't exactly tell a room full of third graders why your day is going so great you can sometimes but not all the time but to be able to tell another adult in the building what's going wonderful in your life or what is stressing you out you know it would be nice to have somebody to talk to while you're at work um, the leaders you want to have people that you can rely on to actually lead you. And by leading, I mean people that will support you, support your growth, support your well being, will not overwhelm you with un th things that are unnecessary or outside of your role within your school. Um, and then outside of the school, leaders who will make you feel a part of the community, again, without taking advantage. Those are people that are definitely the right type of support. People that you can um, lead into a position where you can grow. You wanna be around people that put you in a position where you can grow and develop. And then there's also professionals. Again, I'm a licensed clinical social worker, so I do provide counseling and therapy services um, but being, whether it's seeing a counselor, going to your doctor on a consistent basis, whichever doctor, it could be a specialist for whatever your needs are. You need to make sure that you're getting the right type of support and don't be afraid to say what you need. Once you're able to identify your specific needs, don't be able to, don't be afraid to tell people because Holding it to yourself, again, does more damage than it does good. We gotta be able to release whatever is happening. We gotta be able to identify a part of our body or a part of our thought process or whatever the case may be in order to actually heal and live a mentally healthy, emotionally healthy uh, lifestyle. And that's what I want for every one of you. I want you to be able to teach with mental health in mind. What that means to me is being able to understand people, how people are wired, understanding people's needs, understanding people's desires, understanding that people need opportunities to grow. And that's not just, you know, always on the outside. It always also involves being able to look in the mirror, look on the inside and say, okay, here's what I need in order to be the best version of me as an educator, as a woman, as a man, as a, as a parent, whatever your role is, you need to be able to identify what your needs are, put yourself in a position to be able to release some of the stress that you're experiencing, and then be able to be an example to other people of how to be mature in those different areas. Um, and then also be able to be a uh, advocate, advocate for those who may not be able to recognize their needs themselves. I hope this was definitely helpful for you. Again, mental health is discussed a lot now, especially with um, 
COVID, but over the last several years, it's become up in topics much more often. And I'm grateful for it because we do need to be talking about it more often. There's a lot of groups and cultures that really disregard mental health. But with over the last several years, you know, mass shootings and, and things like that, that have taken place, it's really had a big impact on top of things that are, people had already been experiencing that significantly impacted their mental health, um, whether it's tragedy, whether it's hereditary, it, the range is so wide and we just need to be able to talk about it more. It's not just your students experiencing it, it's your peers that are experiencing it as well. It's your leaders that are experiencing it as well. And we just need to talk about it more. I think it's very important to talk about it more and get an understanding of where people are so that we can extend that love and empathy that is needed in order for everyone to thrive in this world. Um, my name is Erica Worthily. I can be found on almost all forms of social media. I have a website, Erica N. Worthily. Dot com. I am on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. You can find me just by typing in my name. Thankfully, Worthily, everybody's Worthily is related to me, so you shouldn't, you should be able to find me directly by typing in my name. Again, teaching with mental health in mind, extremely important to me as a former educator. As a clinical social worker, I believe in the importance of making sure that we have healthy teachers in order to have healthy classrooms and healthy schools and build a better community. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day.